Is there a way to make corn and beans come back every year without having to replant them? Check out this experiment. I'm going to start with you right now. Getting my three sisters garden ready. And I just found a cob of corn left over from last year. Wow, it's been all winter here. <laughs> this corn spent the whole winter outside. Here's another one. Incredible. I really should plant these. So here's the chinampa surrounded by this fence. Outlines the garden, not the conditions. Conditions are the same inside and out. And here's the water that is under the chinampa. So these two cobs of corn, they spent all winter outside on the plant along with a bunch of beans. I'm going to take these seeds. I just dropped a bunch of compost on top of my chinampa here and I'm just going to plant a bunch of these, about half the cob, and we'll see if they grow. It's a nice colorful type. And here's another type. These are second harvest cobs, these small ones. After you've harvested your first cobs, the plant puts out second ones if you harvested them green, like if you harvested them not completely dry. So the, the plant puts out more and the, the second batch is always smaller. So the cob in the middle here is a typical first harvest cob. And then these other smaller ones are second harvest cobs. They can be a lot smaller than that. If the plant has not been able to produce a cob that has dried its kernels and the cob has been harvested before the kernels could dry, then the plant has not produced seed yet and will try again. So if ever you lose a cob of corn to an animal and it happened when it was green, you'll still have a chance to get more corn off the plant. So just leave it in place. So there, but I've kept a little bit of each. I would have put about a half of each cob. Just spread it on this mound here. I'm gonna cover them up. Today's May 17th, it's maybe a little early, but here in Sterling, but uh, I think it'll be fine. I don't think we're gonna get any frost, at least uh, not after these have sprouted. They'll take at least several days to sprout. The low in a couple days, in two days, the low is six, and that's the lowest low for the rest of the month. So, the rest of the month of May, so I think we're going to be fine. Six degrees Celsius is about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. Now I just have to add the squash and the beans, but I want the corn to grow about this high first. To do the three sisters. These beans have also been outside all winter. So when that corn has sprouted, I'm going to plant these beans, see how they do. Of course, it's very possible that some of these beans have already planted themselves by falling into the soil. So we'll see. This is going to become this. It's just going crazy. It's all the corns and the bean and the beans in the middle are going to be surrounded. This is footage from our July 2024 video, Growing Abundance. Kneel down so you can see it better. This garden belongs to the squash now. And for the same reason that I can't walk past there, the animals aren't going to necessarily want to go in there either because uh, the, those vines are really prickly. As I said in that first video, I think it was in April, when all, all you saw here was leaves, dead leaves uh, surrounded by this fence. Nothing planted. I had just put some of these, some of these branches in. Uh, I had said that the squash would fill this. And it is beginning to fill the garden, not only filling it, but it's growing out of it. As you can see, the garden is surrounded by this sorghum all around except for the ones the, the the other side over there where the water goes by but it 
surrounded by this sorghum and the, the squash is growing out and amongst that sorghum as well. Stay tuned later in the summer for a video where I give you the results of how these seeds did. So with permaculture, we're always trying to work with nature in every way possible so that our food and the food that will support also the environment, the wildlife, will come back every year for us. And for a lot of the vegetables that we eat, it's often not the case, but it can be sometimes. And sometimes it can be surprising. I'll be very interested in knowing if these cobs of corn that spent the whole winter outside are able to regrow. Now, I, I think they should because they were, I don't think they were on the ground. They were, I found them on the ground. And that's because I had only just dismantled the teepee. They were hanging all winter inside their husks. And so that kept them dry. Freezing doesn't seem to be a problem. And it's the same with the beans. So I look forward to finding the results and sharing them with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something from it. If you liked it, then please give it the thumbs up. And don't forget to leave a comment below or ask any a question. I love to answer your questions and respond to your comments. And if you haven't done so yet, then subscribe. Support what we do here just by subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time. This is a flowering quince, scientific name, Chenomeles, and behind it is a red bud, scientific name, Circus canadensis. And here is another flowering quince, Chenomeles.